What's up YouTube? This is James coming back at you with another informative video. How y'all doing out there on this hump day? I hope y'all doing pretty good. I'm doing well myself. Uh, this is a story right here that uh, I came across when I was watching um, a video I saw uh, by Dr. Moomby, actually. And I figured I'd get my take on it because, um, you know, there's a lot of people that's not subscribed to her and they may never even know about this situation right here. You know, so then that way, you know, my subscribers can see what's up, you know, when it comes to this situation. Uh, but what I am saying, uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. All right. We better start realizing who we are as a people and we better start. St stop. In other words, we better start realizing who we are as a people and we better stop um, actually shunning our inheritance as a people. You see, we better realize who we come from, you see, and, and and everything that comes with that. You know, it's almost like we are actually kings and queens. Or should I say prince and princesses of the all one and almighty king, you see, and we know what, you know, um, what inheritance come to princes and princesses prince and princes in other words but it seems like we want to shun that you know we have been out of order for so long okay but i just wanted to say that before i get into the story now the pope pope francis kneels and kisses feet of south sudan leaders okay now um <laughs> that is a so-called powerful man right there the pope is he's very powerful and let me clarify something when i say he's very powerful he's earthly powerful okay he's earthly powerful and a lot of that's that's going to be stripped anyway i'm just saying you know remember it says in the words of the father the earth was given into the hand of the wicked okay but as you can see Okay, the Pope right here, you know, he came and actually kissed the feet of these black men right here. Okay, this is what he doing. See, and just to say too, you know, um, Pope Francis, when he came here, was, it was I think it was either last year or a year before last, he got John Biner, I think it was, the, 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 the Republican House leader, to step down. Biner wasn't going to step down just because, you know what I mean? You know, he wasn't going to just do it on his own. But I noticed when Pope Francis came, had a little meeting with, you know, uh, John Biner. All of a sudden, he was he stepped down as a uh, House Republican leader. See? The Pope got power. I wonder when I said, what the Pope got to do with that? See? But that told me something. But let's get into this story. Okay, it says Pope Francis on Thursday knelt to kiss the feet of South Sudan's previously warring leaders in a dramatic gesture after an unprecedented retreat at the Vatican. Okay. The Pope, however, urged them to not return to civil war. Oh, let me say this too. When a... <laughs> A white man, you know, step in and tell brothers not to fight. That's not a good thing. They should know that anyway, you know. But continuing, he also appealed to President Salva Kiir, his former deputy turned rebel leader, Rik Makar, and three other vice presidents to respect a peace agreement they signed and commit to forming a unity government in May. I am asking you as a brother to stay in peace. I am asking you with my heart. Let us go forward. There will be many problems, but they will not overcome us. Resolve your problems, Francis said in improvised remarks. Okay, uh, the leaders appear to be stunned as the 82-year-old Pope helped, helped by AIDS knelt with difficulty to kiss the shoes of the two 
main opposing leaders, and several other people in the room. The Pope's words were made even more pressing as anxiety grew in South Sudan over rather Thursday's coup. In neighboring Sudan could sculper a fragile peace deal that ended South Sudan's brutal five-year civil war. Wow, that's just crazy. The Vatican brought together South Sudanese leaders for 24 hours of prayer and preaching inside the Pope's residence in a last-ditch attempt to heal bitter divisions a month before the war ravaged nations due to set up a unity government. Okay, well, we, we know what that's leading into right there, you know. It's just too bad they playing a part, I believe, in the negative way of the Father's prophecy in the end times. But nevertheless, you see what he's doing. There's a, a little video, you know what I mean, of it, but I don't, I'm not going to play that. But let me go over here. Just check this out. NBC's Claudio Lavanga is in Vatican City. Claudio, what do we know about what happened at that meeting this morning? And can you explain to the viewers who don't know why this is so rare? Well, Alex, as far as meetings go, it doesn't get more historic than this one. As soon as we saw the two popes together, we knew that this was a one of a kind. They were both dressed in white, of course, the only difference being with Pope Francis was uh, wearing a little sash and a little cape there. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI, the Emeritus, of course, uh, walked to the helipad in his walking cane, looking very frail, waiting for the Pope Francis to arrive in his white helicopter. And they embraced in a long embrace that was one of the first moving moments of this historic meeting because after that they went into the summer residence went to the pri into the private chapel to pray together and pope benedict 16 offered to pope francis the stool that is reserved is reserved for popes to pray in front of the altar and pope francis said no we are brothers and we're gonna and we are going to pray together and so they did they kneeled together on the same stool in a very symbolic uh, moment of course so then they went into the library and Pope Francis gave Pope Benedict XVI a small icon of uh, Our Lady of Humility and he said, well, the first person I thought of when I saw this icon was you. Well, of course, again, expressing and extending his gratitude for the eight years of his papacy. And they went on into a very informal uh, lunch and then he flew back uh, uh, to uh, the Vatican with the same helicopter. Well, I must say, to the great disappointment of the hundreds of people that gathered in Castel Gandolfo hoping for the Pope or the Popes together, to appear on that balcony, Alex. Yes, but nonetheless, what a day and what pictures you are able to bring us. Thank you so much, NBC's Claudia Lavanga from Vatican City. Now, as you can see, those popes was kneeling and praying to the Black Madonna and the Messiah, the baby Messiah, Yahuwah Hamashiach. That's who they're they praying to. Now, if they know who we are, and they feel like we, you know, our, our lineage, I mean, our ancestors, that's who that is. And they feel the need to get down on their knees and pray to them. Why can't we understand who we are? What more proof do you need? See? That shows you right there. Who we are as a people. It's important to understand this. The Black Madonna, a.k.a. Mother Mary, and Yehoshua, the Messiah, Hamashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. That's who they were praying to. That tells you right there what's up. See? So it's time to do some soul searching and start repenting and getting on a cord. AKA code. We got to get on code as a people. That's all I got on this one. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think about this situation. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And this is James, and I'm out. Peace.